Ed is Graham here living the dream in 2021 at the incredible Sandals Grand Antigua. You're watching part three of our Antigua 21 adventure. Friday and day seven for us meant flit day. If you've been following our Antigua 21 adventure so far, you may remember that we only had this room for the first six nights of our 2021 vacation. And that literally meant that Fiona and I had to check out of room 512 as if we were leaving the resort, hang around for four hours and then check into our new room, which was 804 at the Sunset Bluff. So after a relaxing morning by the pool next to the beach, we made our way up to the Sunset Bluff rooms and our new room, which was 804. And for those of you who followed our 2019 trip to the Sandals Grand Antigua, this is where our room was during that seven nights. The Sunset Bluff Rooms are situated sort of at the back of the resort, basically on the border between the Caribbean and the Mediterranean sides. In the same way Fiona and I love the hideaway rooms at the Sandals Lazores Grenada, we love the Sunset Bluff at the Sandals Grand Antigua because it's quiet. And this is room 804, a club level Sunset Bluff walkout room. As you can see, to access these rooms at the Sunset Bluff, you need to walk behind the room block themselves. To be honest, during the day, Fiona and I would just exit and re-enter the room through the main sliding doors at the front, which we simply left unlocked during the day. With our valuables locked in the safe, we didn't see a big issue with this. And as we enter room 804, the first thing I wanna say is these rooms at the Sunset Bluff have been refurbished since we last visited in 2019. But as you can imagine, the bathroom is exactly the same place with a modernized sink and vanity unit and a wardrobe just opposite with a new and much larger safe. The old baths had been replaced by this walk-in shower but sadly Sandals hadn't managed to resolve the water pressure issue and I do think that the water pressure at all of the showers at the Sandals Grand Antigua is pretty pathetic. Exiting back out of the bathroom you enter what is a very spacious room and of course being a club level room the mini bar is kept fully stocked with all of your favourite drinks including champagne and top shelf liquor is also provided. To us, the bed looked exactly the same as we had at the Sunset Bluff room two years ago at this very resort. And while the furniture seemed to have been refurbished, I'm not convinced it was new. And of course, the reason Fiona and I wanted this room was the ability to simply open those sliding doors and walk out to the pool. And that's it guys for Friday and day seven. <laughs> Day 8 of our Sandals Grand Antigua 21 adventure and I'm handing the video over to our awesome friends from Glasgow, Donna and Michael because a week into our holiday, Donna and Michael are heading out to join us and that's why you're joining them here at London Heathrow International Airport on board a Virgin Atlantic Airbus A330 as they start their 8 hour flight to Antigua. And of course, as Michael and Donna enjoy the hospitality on board Virgin Atlantic, Fiona and I are sleeping. And something that I've noticed about my GoPro Hero 9 as I edit these videos, the camera, I'm afraid, is shockingly poor in low light conditions. But back on board Virgin Atlantic, Donna and Michael are really enjoying the upper class experience. And just like Fiona a week earlier, Donna and Michael were Virgin Virgins on this trip. But as our friends continued their trip westbound across the Atlantic, Fiona and I started 
our second week at the Sandals Grand Antigua, heading to the pool next to the beach where we had spent the last four days. Generally chilling out, reading more than a few books, drinking quite a few cocktails and obviously simply relaxing. And if you're wondering why we didn't spend our first full day at the Sunset Bluff Pool, I have to admit it guys, I fell foul to Towelgate. In essence, if you weren't up before 7am getting your towels out by the loungers at the Sunset Bluff Pool, you weren't getting a lounger at all that day at the Sunset Bluff. It was a right royal pain in the backside and definitely a failure at this resort during the time that we visited in October 2019. We weren't going to let Talgate ruin our 2021 adventure at the Sandals Grand Antigua, so we headed across the resort to the little pool next to the beach beside the Caribbean beach view rooms. And with Donna and Michael about two hours out from Antigua, Fiona and I decided to take another walk back across the resort to the Mediterranean side and have lunch at Barefoot on the Beach. On both our trips to Antigua, I've sat on the other side of the aircraft, so it was great for Michael to be sitting on the right-hand side of the aircraft on this approach into VC Bird International, capturing this incredible video on his iPhone. And that's it, Don and Michael had arrived in Antigua and the foursome would soon be reunited for a fun-filled week at the Sandals Grand Antigua. <laughs> Jumping forward to Tuesday and day 11, I'm only going to cover one thing today and that of course is the Sandals returning guest dinner on Tuesday evening. As you all know, I hate these events and the only reason we went is because Fiona and I were being awarded our free week, which is of course the only reason we went to the returning guest dinner at the Sandals Grand St. Lucian last year when Donna and Michael were awarded their free week. But I'm going to be brutally honest. In our opinion, the food at the returning guest dinner has always been mass produced rubbish and within minutes of arriving, you're going to be asking yourself is this nearly over can i go back to the drunken duck and get some decent food but sadly not guys because then you're going to be subjected to an r listening to the sandals on-site management team praising themselves and their colleagues in some weird weekly self-gratification routine <laughs> Thursday and day 12 of our Antigua 21 adventure was the 13th of October and unlucky for some, Fiona, Donna, Michael and I took the decision to leave the resort for a few hours and head into St John's, the capital city of Antigua. So we booked a taxi from the Sandals front desk and donned our masks to board the minibus for the 10 to 15 minute drive into St John's. And yes guys, unlike our minibus ride from the airport to the resort, I did manage to call shotgun and grab the front passenger seat in a bid to get you footage of this short journey into St John's. I should state now that when we visited Antigua during the first two weeks of October in 2021, mask wearing was compulsory by law in all taxis. We were reliably informed that the fine for not complying with this mask wearing regulation was a $500 fine. And thank goodness I never did find out if the fine was 500 US dollars or 500 East Caribbean dollars.
yes guys, St. John's even has a KFC, which I always say is my guilty pleasure. But let's get back to the short drive from Sandals into St. John's. As you can see, the roads are absolutely terrible. Antigua was under British rule from 1660 to 1981. And to be honest, I'm not sure which century they were last resurfaced. But given how bad they are, I don't think these roads have been touched since the British left in 1981. But as you can see, we're now entering St. John's with its population of 51,200 from the 2011 census. And that therefore represents just over half the population of the island of Antigua, which is 98,000. And as we approach what I guess is the city centre, you can see the roads get no better. The potholes are as large as a lunar crater and the storm drains at the side of the roads all seem to be breaking up, making the situation even worse. The taxi dropped Fiona, Donna, Michael and I at the duty free zone, which is right next to the port of St. John's. And you guessed it guys, that is where the cruise liners come in. And yes guys, well spotted, we are still wearing our face masks. For some ridiculous reason, the Antiguan authorities required all public, even outdoors, to wear masks. I have no problem with mandatory mask wearing on public transport in public buildings, but outdoors, I seriously don't think there is any scientific evidence that mask wearing outdoors makes the potential of catching COVID any less. And to be honest guys, if we'd known that mask wearing was compulsory even outdoors, I'm not sure we would have travelled in to St John's today. But our trip into St John's got worse when the girls went off clothes shopping and Michael and I went looking for a beer. Michael and I gone back to the pub where we drank Wodadley two years ago only to find it was closed due to Covid. However, when we found a pub and paid for the two beers, we were told we had to leave the premises. It was therefore illegal for us to drink beer in a pub. So we found this raised platform, walked up the steps, sat down to drink her beer before going for a walk to see if St. John's had anything better to show us. Michael did find four emaciated dogs sleeping under a parked car, which just made the visit to this depressing town even worse. If we could have found the girls, I think we would have called the taxi to come back and get us. So with Donna and Fiona off buying dresses, there was little else Michael and I could do but go back to that pub, get two more beers, and sit on that raised platform, enjoying the view over St. John's. Coming up in part four of our Antigua 21 adventure, Fiona and I go for a walk on the beach, and just ahead of the COP26 climate conference in Fiona's hometown of Glasgow, we discuss the potential effects of global warming on Antigua. And if that wasn't exciting enough, we continue our walk past the old abandoned resort next to Sandal, before Fiona tries her hand as a kimono chef. And all of this to come in part four of our Antigua 21 adventure, so you know what to do guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.